Hi, it's John here. Uh, if you're coming on to this from the last video about R.S. Thomas, um, I got the quote slightly wrong. The quote, um, the church is like the wound rather than the bandage, was actually somebody describing what Den uh, what um, R.S. Thomas's um, theology or or view, philosophy, or whatever it was, um, is. And the quote, that quote, is actually from Dennis Potter. Um, but moving on, on a similar, a similar vein, uh, did anybody watch last night on television um, David Frost talking to Joan Bakewell? I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. And... Uh, I'm gonna, you know, watch it again probably. I've got, I've got this thing on the telly where you can watch stuff again. But the only thing that, well, one of the things that that amazed me was she she described herself as a non-believing member of the Church of England. Hmm. Um. I didn't really know you could be a member of the Church of England if you didn't believe in God. Um. Don't we have to, isn't the Apostles' Creed and the Nicene Creed part of the service that you have to say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, etc., etc., or we believe in God, and, and all that. Um, okay, people, uh, maybe they don't stand, maybe they don't actually say that. Some people don't say certain parts of the service. Um, but then if you're not a communicant member, you're not a member of the Church of England, are you? You've got to be able to. You've got to say that creed, and then uh, and then you can receive communion, and then you are a member of the Church of England. But if you, if, you, if you don't if you don't believe the tenets of it, surely you're not a member. Is there going to be a whole sort of body of unbelieving um, Church of England Greek people, and th they can get on General Synod and put their views forward? Perhaps there is. I mean, I know there is an awful lot of unbelieving clerg clergy. Um, I don't know what the percentage is, but it's a big, it's a big number, and they should pack it in, and they should uh, cease to receive their stipend. Okay, maybe they can get pension or whatever, whatever pension they owed, because they've uh, they've done a certain amount of tasks, but. If, if a clergyman ceases to believe in God, um, <laughs> it's a whole nonsense, isn't it? It's a complete nonsense. I mean, going back to the R.S. Thomas poem, once I thought I saw the curtain twitch, but I may have been mistaken. You know, this whole belief in doubt. Um, to me, believing is a leap of faith. If you believe, you don't believe because once you saw the curtains twitch, because that's not faith. If, if the twi curtains did twitch, then that would be science, wouldn't it? One believes through faith. And I dare say, I think the position that I've come to is, is that um, God is everything and everything is God. You know, I don't believe in this separation between the earth um, and God. You know, it, it's all God. Some might say it's a sort of pantheism that I believe in. Um, so I'm not looking for something to happen outside of God. I'm not looking for the machine code behind all events. You know, I see it in all things. You know, like I said in, in the previous video about, uh, I can't remember what it was about now, but, um, you, you know, you look and, and, and you see see existence of God everywhere. Um but uh, I think, well, it's obvious that the whole thing about the Church of England and about all the, all the um, established churches, well, not, maybe not the Catholics, because the Catholics have to remain celibate, which is a bit of a, a pain, isn't it? But uh, I think a lot of the um, established churches, um, it's all about money at the end of the day, isn't it? And all this absolute nonsense about Thatcher's funeral, oh my goodness, oh, that drives me crazy. I, I can't bear to even think of the woman you know, to think that we're paying for that funeral, 
it, it, it's grotesque. Right, bye for now.